Hey guys, Von Klo here. I hope all of you are keeping hashing and today we want to take a look on the NerdX Gamma designed by Bitmaker and sold by plenty of resellers. So let's take a look into this little device and let's make sure that you do know how to set this up and what to expect from it. Let's get started. So this right here is the Nerd X Gamma, which is basically a bit X, a little bit modified to utilize the Lilligo T Display S3, the H577 module, which does have the GPIO pins attached to it so that you can attach it onto the PCB, which is then featuring the ASIC, the heatsink and so on. This design right here got sent over to me from NerdMiner.de to make sure no money has exchanged the hands and I'm not willing to do so anyway. What I want to do for you guys today is I want to give you a quick start guide on how to set up your NerdX Gamma so that you do know how to set this up. But before we dive into the setup thing, what I want to make sure is I want to plug this quickly in and we can take a look on the beautiful screen right here as well as making sure that you do know what this device is capable of. This right here does have obviously a nice stand as well as a bigger cooler. It's the 52 Pi cooler on it, as well as a little bit of a case all around it, which does look nice. It's really handy and it does have the Noctua fan on it. Obviously every reseller is doing something different. Some do have enclosures, some don't have enclosures, some have other fans or heat sinks. That doesn't matter. What this device is capable of is basically the exact same as what your BitX Gamma is capable of. This device can reach up to on the normal conditions, 1.2, 1.3 terahash at roughly 16 to 70 joules per terahash. So 16 to 70 watts per terahash, which is a nice thing. Under the hood here is still a ASIC chip. And this one does feature the BM1370 chip, which is the same that you also do get when you do purchase a BX Gamma. And by the way, if you're interested in getting anything like this or a BX, make sure to check out the video description down below. I do have a couple of links there for you. So this right here is a nice device. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we check out how to set this up so that you get the overview of what you need to do. Well, basically the first thing that you actually need to do is to plug it into power. Hopefully all these resellers will give you a model which is already flashed with the latest firmware. This right here does have the latest firmware and what it also does have is it does feature a power supply that it came with. There are plenty of different power supplies. What you need to make sure is you need to have a five volt power supply. 12 volts will burn this device as well as any other voltage. So make sure that if you do get your power supply with your NerdX Gamma, that you double check what is on the bottom of the power supply and you see five volts output. Usually what I do recommend is something five to six amps, four amps, should be okay, but it gets a little bit toasty. So I would really recommend something between five to six amps so that you do have a little bit of headroom when it comes to playing around with it, overclocking it a little bit, whatever you guys do like. So now it is actually time to go through the process of setting it up because it is plugged in and that's basically all you need to do. You just plug it in and afterwards we grab our phone and we set it up on the phone. One thing that you also need to make sure is this device connects to your Wi-Fi and over your Wi-Fi to a pool that you do select to mine to. It's a Bitcoin miner. Obviously, there are also other SHA-256 coins available, but I'm not talking about shitcoin. I'm just doing here Bitcoin stuff. So let's hop over to my phone and let's make sure that you do guys see how to set it up on your phone. So the first thing that we actually want to do is we want to go over to the settings. I'm currently setting this up on my iPhone, but the steps should be the same on your Android or whatever operating system you do use. You can also do this with your Windows PC or your Linux PC or your MacBook. The steps are basically the same. The first thing we already did, we plugged it into power. So now we go over to Wi-Fi and we enable it. And 
there is one prerequisite that you need to have. You need to have a Bitcoin address. Otherwise, this does not work. And here is the beautiful thing. You already see there is nerdx underscore CEFD. We want to select this because this is the Wi-Fi network that the device is making public. And here's the cool thing. It automatically opens a captive portal, which is basically a overview of, hey, uh, this is my web page and connect to me. It is the same mechanism that you're used to if you go into a hotel and you try to connect to the hotel Wi-Fi. So if we go over to the top left side, here are a burger menu. We can click on settings and we can come over here. What we want to do here is we want to go over to the My SSID. And on the phone, you do see it's not really that well designed, but it's way better on the PC. So we put in the Wi-Fi name. In my example, it's this one. And for the password, we also put in a password. After we have done so, what we can do is we can come down and in here you see Stratum user. You want to basically delete whatever is in there. Let's make sure to do that. And now you need to have a Bitcoin address and I want to paste it in here directly. So with that, we basically have set up everything that we need to do. You can also configure a fallback stratum pool, which does mean if the first or primary pool ever goes down, it is actually connecting to another one. But in this example of just setting it up and getting used to it, we're not looking into that. So let's scroll down a little bit here. We do see mining settings, core voltage, frequency. We, we don't really want to look into them right now. We want to click on save and afterwards we want to click on restart. Now what this will do, it will actually save these settings, the Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password to the device as well as the Bitcoin address. We already have a pre-selected pool on this device, which is referring over to a solo pool, which is totally fine. So now what we want to do is we want to take a look on the screen itself so that you guys see what has happened on the display itself and what kind of hash rate we do achieve. Let's get over to it, right? So now that we have done the basic part of actually setting it up and connecting it to our Wi-Fi and making sure it does connect to the Wi-Fi, we can take a look on the screen and we do see it is already ramping up. Let me show you this into the camera that you do see what's going on there. You do see the hash rate has been displayed on the screen. It does take a little bit to ramp up and uh, this is for a reason because all these NerdX devices, they do have an option that when you come over to the display, uh, when you come over to the web page, you can see the historical hash rate. So what this device was doing basically a couple hours ago. And this takes a little bit of time because it's storing all this data. So be aware of when you do set it up for the first time and it boots up, it takes a little bit of time. It's not destroyed or anything else. It just takes a couple of minutes until it reaches its full potential. And we're currently at 250 giga hashes and slowly ramping up. If I do take a look on the wattage that we do consume, we're currently sitting at 12 watts. Obviously, you do have two buttons on this one and they have designed it with like black buttons. So there is a difference between the orange case and these black buttons. And if I do take a look on the upper button, this is for turning the screen on and off. So I can turn the screen on again. This might be handy if you don't want to have the display always on or you don't want to or you want to prevent any sort of burn in effect on this device. And the bottom button does take us to other screens. For example, this one right here does have a couple of other stats and you do get the point. It is giving us a little bit more information. We also should get the Bitcoin prize. I I had just a outage on the internet and here we go, $104,000, awesome. We also see the hash rate in the top corner as well as the temperature of the device. And if you click on it again, we can also see global stats of the network, which is just fantastic. So overall, setting up this thing should be as easy as possible. Everybody can do that. And I do hope you show this to your grandmother as well because she might need to mine a little bit of Bitcoin and who knows, with a solo style mining device like this, you might get lucky. I do think it's a beautiful device. I thank Bitmaker for making the Nerdix camera, designing it and doing the changes to bring it to life. 
and I want to make sure that you do guys know what you need to expect when you do set up something like this. So this should be your automate setup guide for your NerdX camera. Make sure to subscribe and like this video so you don't miss out on any further. Thanks for watching. Peace out.